My wife and I, 42, were touring Bora Bora for her 38th birthday. I worked hard every day to make this happen for her because she meant the world to me. We were together for seven years at this point. For our vacation, we were part of a group that had several different tourist attractions lined up. The cost of the ticket included the attractions, hotel stay, transportation, and even meals and drinks. It was extremely convenient, not having to think about money or our budget at all. Looking back, it felt like I was in a different world for that week. This feeling must have gone to my wife's head a little, because she started acting incredibly different. We met a nice couple at the start of the tour, at a big breakfast. They sat at our table, and stayed pretty close to us the rest of the trip. We took pictures of each other in front of scenic areas, and started chatting about our lives back at home. This couple had a pretty lavish life. They and their parents owned hotels in New York City. I could see my wife's wheels turning, as she started asking the couple for life advice. She started to seem disappointed and quiet, because she was comparing our lives to theirs. We couldn't help that we didn't come from a wealthy lineage, but we each had decent jobs, and according to me, our life was good. We were making the best of our situation, but it wasn't good enough for my wife, at least not the vacation spellbound version of my wife, who felt like she could get used to this spoiled way of living. She started speaking with AP directly more, even if his wife and I were standing or sitting there. He made a reference to his extraordinary skills in the bedroom, and it didn't go unnoticed. His wife elbowed him, my wife giggled, and I wanted to take her far away from him. His wife had the same idea, because she started talking with him and leading him away to look at the scenery. I asked my wife directly if she was flirting with him. She was surprised I asked so straightforwardly, and blushed as she said absolutely not. The next day, we went snorkeling, and I always seemed to notice AP swimming nearby. Afterwards, we were on the beach and, thankfully, weren't too close to the couple. My wife hesitantly asked if I ever considered a foursome. I spat out my drink. No, I didn't want to share her, and our vacation wasn't the appropriate time to discuss this kind of proposition. I had believed up until that point that my wife wouldn't want to sleep with anyone but me. I became very nervous, and after we ate dinner with everyone, we found out AP and his wife were staying on the same hotel floor as us. I didn't like this at all, and I would have felt even worse if I knew my wife already got AP's phone number. In the hotel room that night, she talked about the couple, but it seemed like she only talked about AP's wife, so I wouldn't suspect how interested she was in AP. I told her to stop talking about them, and that I didn't want to hang out with them anymore during our vacation. I added that I didn't like how AP stared at her in her bathing suit. She smiled a little when I said this, and I called her on it. She shut herself in the bathroom because she was frustrated I was being so accusatory. The next day, we went for an underwater walk. Wearing helmets with oxygen, we were able to peek into the lives of tropical fish. It was nice, and I didn't notice the couple as much. I was feeling happy and hopeful, and it seemed like my wife decided to wise up. We went up onto the beach to dry off, drink, eat, and tan. The couple was out of sight, and my wife and I laid side by side in lounge chairs. The next thing I knew, I was waking up from a nap. It must have been at least 30 minutes, because my legs were toasted by the sun. My wife was gone. I started walking around and looking for her, kind of disoriented. I saw some of our tour group members, so I knew I wasn't left behind. When I saw AP's wife was alone, I panicked. I noticed footprints in the sand, leading away from the crowd. In the giant rock face to the right, I found the sea cave entrance and could hear my wife giggling. I only walked in a few steps to see them kissing deeply. AP's arms were wrapped around her, feeling whatever he could. I just yelled, hey, because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My wife gasped and pushed AP back. Then she began to realize how guilty they both looked and that I definitely saw what they were doing. She said she was sorry, but it was without emotion. I was just staring at them for what felt like minutes before I just told them they were both married. I asked what the heck they were thinking, and my wife just quietly said she needed to have more thrills. My voice cracked when I asked how a trip to Bora Bora wasn't enough. How I wasn't enough. Suddenly, AP's wife appeared behind me. She freaked out even more than I was. In her dismay, she yelled about how he had the nerve to sneak off with another man's wife, while she was carrying his child. 
Then it looked like my wife felt really bad. AP should have felt worse, because he knew his wife was expecting, and he knew my wife was married too. I was sure they would have slept with each other if given the chance, so I left my wife there. I went straight home, leaving the tour early. I left my wife's belongings in the hotel room. I didn't care if she would follow me home or not. I knew I didn't want to forgive her for wanting and letting another man touch her. Even if she regretted it or acknowledged that it was bad. Only a few days passed after I got home before I got a call from my wife's father. At first I thought he was going to be upset with me for leaving his daughter there, but instead he apologized to me. My ex was there, at his house with him, looking devastated and embarrassed. She told him she was in love with a married man that she just met on vacation with me. He told me she said I left her there because I was upset that she was spending time with this man. I corrected this, telling him that I caught her with AP's hands all over her and his tongue in her mouth. He was really surprised and uncomfortable. He yelled at her, calling her by her full name like she was a child. She acted like a child, whining in the background. He told me he was going to deal with her. Two weeks later, he told me she left his house to live with her cousin, as a sort of live and maid, in exchange for free meals and a place to stay. I didn't believe it because not even three weeks ago, our marriage was going so well. She was loving her job, and we had hopes for the future. She just lost it when she saw people that had more. Let this be a lesson to everyone, not to get carried away just because you think you deserve what others have. Life simply can't be the same for everyone. Appreciate what you have, that you found love and someone trusts you with their heart. OP, that vacation should have been a special time for her to appreciate the life you had together. It's supposed to serve as a way to celebrate, but she just gave you a reason to regret the entire marriage and all the years spent together. I am relieved that you woke up and found them. It must have been hard to get through this and fly home alone, but I respect you for that. You simply can't ignore when someone does this to you. They would never truly love you or put you above themselves. The relationship would become a form of emotional torture. It takes willpower and self-respect to leave a cheating spouse without hesitation. Just remember that this was not your fault, and you only become stronger and wiser in the future by enduring it. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Let's now get into our second story for today. One day, I, 38, was at work when I got a phone call from my good friend. I hadn't heard from him for a while. He opened his own pizza shop after we graduated college. His pizza shop and all the people I knew and loved lived in Des Moines, Iowa. I was married to my wife, 36, for five years at this point. We started taking karate lessons a year prior because both of us were determined to stay active. Nowadays, it's easy to just stay home or work from home, so I gained some weight. I was actually in the best shape of my life when I got this phone call from my pizza shop friend, Mr. Pepper. He told me that his frequent customer, a family law attorney, just met for lunch with a potential client. The client was my wife. Mr. Pepper told me she told the lawyer that she regrettably started an affair, but she didn't want to lose alimony payments in case she didn't stay with her lover. She was completely absorbed in herself and aiming to use me as much as she could after she cheated on me. I could not believe what he was telling me. I was a UPS driver, so I knew a lot of names in the town. I asked if Mr. Pepper overheard my wife give the name of her AP, knowing it was a long shot. He answered me right away, like he knew I was going to ask, and it turned out to be our karate instructor. My mind was blown, my heart was breaking. I thought it was going to shrivel up and die. When it didn't, I decided I wouldn't let her get away with this. I worked my shift for UPS the next day and actually had a package for AP's wife, delivering it to their home address. I can't remember if it was that same day or next that my wife and I had a karate class together. A part of me didn't know why I hadn't confronted her yet, but I figured she couldn't divorce me in a matter of weeks, so I wouldn't let her know I was looking for evidence against her. My wife's sister was there at our karate class and told me she was kidnapping my wife for the night to talk about her recent breakup. Her acting was pretty convincing, but my wife's wasn't. She acted all surprised and bummed, like she planned on spending the evening with me at home. I wanted to scream at her, but I refrained. I left in our car alone, but waited to see what happened. My wife's sister only stayed a few minutes before leaving alone. Then my wife came out with AP 10 minutes later, 
and got into his car with him. They drove to his home address, and when I saw them getting out of the car, something overtook me. I drove my front tires up to the curb, right in front of AP's house and driveway, so that my headlights and high beams illuminated everything. I filmed as I got out of the car, making sure I showed their faces as I screamed to ask what was going on. They were so shocked. My wife asked what I was doing there, but AP thought it was better to run inside with her and lock the front door. The house went dark. I considered staying and waiting for her to come out, but I had my proof and my blood was pumping. I drove home and printed out large, blown-up stills of their faces in front of his house. I put these pictures inside a taped box with Mrs. AP's name. She must have been away when I delivered her last delivery because it was still on the porch in the video. So if she had more than one thing to open, I didn't think AP would even notice the package. With the box ready to go in my truck, my wife returned home, miserable and nervous. I said she had a lot of nerve to come back after what she did to me. She asked what I was talking about, as if she didn't already know, so I told her I knew she was cheating on me with AP, and that she met with a lawyer at the pizza shop. She was embarrassed and told me she was sorry. I told her she was a heartless cow for cheating on me, while I tried to do something fun with her, to learn self-defense together. I think she tried asking me for a second chance, but I could barely hear her because I was ranting about how unfair it was. I pointed out that she was only back home because AP was married and expecting his wife to return. My wife must have been an idiot because she gasped like she didn't know he was married. So that was the fault in her plan. She wanted to leave me and start an immediate happily ever after with AP, but had no idea he was married. She told me she didn't see any pictures of his wife in the house, and I just laughed. I told her AP's wife would be seeing pictures of her for certain. She looked scared and worried, but mostly just discouraged and broken because she knew she messed up. She thought she was getting a new husband easy as pie, but now she was losing the only one she had. I told her this was all her fault for her delusional thinking and inability to see just how much I mattered to her and how much I didn't deserve this. At this point, I made it clear she wouldn't be staying in the house as long as I was here, because she was the one that ruined our marriage. She went to her sister's house. The next day, after I dropped off the package for AP's wife with the incriminating photos and note, my wife's sister came over and told me the truth about the night at the karate place. My wife had told her that I was emotionally abusive and would freak out if she wanted a night out without me. That's why she lied and didn't want to say anything to me. Now she knew the truth because my wife arrived at her house the night before, crying all over the place about what a terrible person she was. Sounds about right. AP's wife obviously freaked out when she got the photos and my anonymous note. She filed for divorce, and as a consequence, AP lost his karate dojo. OP, I am sorry your wife betrayed you like this. It is a wonderful goal to stay fit with your spouse. Fitness and good health can really improve your relationship, while making the bedroom more fun and less strenuous. Learning karate is a wonderful idea for fun, culture, and a self-defense skill. Your attempt to do something good with your ex went unappreciated. Instead, she noticed someone else and made the decision to start a relationship with him behind your back. It is a relief that your friend at the pizza shop just happened to see your wife meeting with a lawyer and heard their conversation. He was good enough to call you, giving you the chance to act in your own defense. It's good that you got the proof you needed and brought AP's infidelity to light as well. Thank you for sharing this story. I wish you the best of luck in life. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.